In this demonstration, we're going to talk about how to recreate a PowerPoint file into the lesson builder within KPA EHS. I like to think of the lesson designer. If you pop into here, you can create a new lesson. I like to think of it very similar to PowerPoint where you would have to create each option slide by slide to have it play. Um, there are options if you click add a slide here to add that document as a document slide. However, they would have to scroll through that and then they just click next and it completes the training topic from there. Um, if you did want to build that out, you could actually copy and paste it into like bullet slides and do all that work. However, I'm going to show you an easy way to kind of recreate it by using each one as an image slide and then just copying and pasting in the narration. So to do that, um, as I stated, the first thing you'll go into is your training. You're going to go into edit lessons here and then you're going to click this new button at the top to create your new lesson. You will need to title it. I actually have a personal protective equipment one that I'm making. Just to give you an idea. And it does require a description, so usually you can put additional information in there if you need to. You wanted to abbreviate. And then what the auto link training does is it will create that training topic under your training section under view training so that you get that hand in hand relationship where you can see that lesson is tagged to it and then you can assign it out to your users from there. And then also schedule that renewal rate of how often you want them to take that lesson. Um, so that is nice having that feature auto linked. And then what only visible if assigned means is if they're assigned that topic, then they'll see that lesson. If it's not assigned to them, then they would not see that option to take the lesson. Um, so now we actually need to change all of our PowerPoint slides into images. So to do that, you'll just pull up your PowerPoint presentation. And as a note, if you are a Mac or Apple user, I've been told that they don't actually have this option. So if you have a Windows user that could do this for you, um, you could send the file over to them and ask them to kind of do this for you. It's actually a very easy process. So what they're gonna do is just save as, and then instead of a PowerPoint presentation here, we're actually gonna change it to the JPEG option, which is just changing it to that image format. When you click save here, it'll ask you if you wanna do all slides or just that one slide that you were on. In this case, we wanna do all slides. That way we don't have to recreate our whole topic again. It also tells me that it's gonna house it in that same folder, but it also creates a new folder called the same thing as that PowerPoint presentation. So you just click OK and it actually brings you back into your file. If you close this out, you'll actually see now I got an extra folder here for all of my slides that are now in that image format. So now that these are images, I can actually go through and upload these as an image to our lesson builder. So we're gonna click here to add a slide. And I did this split view, because you can actually just drag and drop. And then we'll do an image slide here. And then if I just drag and drop from my other screen here, I can add that image right in. And now it's gonna display full screen. Um, so now I'll click done, and then we need to add an additional. So I need to do this as many times as I have slides here and then I would need to come back in and add the narration as well. So we would add all of our slides and then I'll pause there because I won't make you watch the tedious of, tediousness of adding the slides. Um, but once you got to the bottom, you would just finish off by adding in your narration next. Um, so now that I'm in this view here, I do like to change it over to this view so I can get a little bit better view of what I'm working with here. So feel free to play around with these view options, they'll be handy for you. And then now if I click edit on each one of these slides, I can actually add in my narration. Again, if you don't have this feature, you would have to subscribe to the customizable content to get the narration option. 
um, which would be through your sales rep to kind of get that add-on added to your um, account. Otherwise, they could still watch the lesson without narration and then they would just read it from there. Um, so here we do have a narration tab. You could see the graphic tab actually has that image already inserted. You could have the narration here and then you just open up your original PowerPoint file and just copy and paste the text from there. As a note, sometimes we will do a double space like this because it will slow the narrator down. So a lot of times between sentences, that is a good way to kind of make him take a natural breath. And then that way he can say a little bit more. Um, also, if you need to, you could kind of make him less robotic and say, you know, welcome and build this out a little bit more. Welcome to the PPE um, lesson. As a reminder, PPE is the last line of defense or something like that. Um, again, just so that they don't sound so robotic. You can also listen to how he's going to sound. Um, and then if you only wanted to listen to a certain sentence, you can actually just highlight or certain words that he says, you can just highlight that area. And then if you click listen, it would only repeat what you have highlighted. So instead of having to listen to the whole narration over and over, especially if it's lengthy, you can just highlight a certain area and he'll say exactly what you have highlighted from there. So I'll go ahead and click done, or you could go ahead and click the next button once you have all your images added. And then this will bring you into that next slide there that you have set up. You can click on the narration again, and then we can pull back open our PowerPoint slide and copy and paste this text as well. Um, as another note too, just as a heads up, he may say some things funky, so if you need to, you may have to spell things phonetically. Also, if you need to, you can add additional commas anywhere, and that will also make him kind of pause as well whenever the narrator is talking. So you kind of play around with making him pause and sound more natural if he is blowing through the narration too much. Um, as I stated a lot of times, the double spaces between sentences will kind of already give him that natural breath and then he'll just kind of read through and continue on from there. And then the last slide here, we'll just add in again the narration. And then the last part I wanted to show you here was how to create the quiz section. Um, there is actually a quiz in this one. You'd probably obviously want to copy the heading too. Protection from head injury, make sure it fits properly, all that good stuff. All right, so we'll hit done. So the next one is a different type of slide. Um, whenever I did create this into the image slides, it actually does show the quiz questions here as images as well. However, I wouldn't want to upload it like that because it actually wouldn't allow them to kind of answer the questions from here. Plus these ones actually give them the answer right on screen, which isn't the best for the user who is trying to fill that out. So um, if you, and for you know purposes of learning, you want them to capture that analytic of how well they did on the quiz. If you add a slide here, you will see the option for a quiz. So this is how we add the quiz option. Um, there are options to add steps. So if you had a step-by-step -step process that you wanted them to put in order, you can create that. If you had images that you wanted them to match the text to the image, you can have them do that. But most typical ones that you'll build out are just by adding the question here. So again, I'll just pop back over to my PowerPoint here. I'm gonna scroll down and look at my first question and just copy and paste this. And here I can already see my answer is true on this true, true and false. So we'll add our answers here. So first we're gonna select true or type in true, I should say. And then we're gonna add another answer for false. And then to make it correct, 
you're going to click on the incorrect option. And then now that's going to say that true is going to count that answer as a correct option. One other question I wanted to show you as well, um, there is automatic narration on the actual quiz question, so you don't need to do anything there that actually automatic re reads without you having to do anything, which is super nice. Um, the other thing is if you do another question, I wanted to point out this type of question. So we have this one here with safety glasses and the answer is all of the above. So let me plug this in. Move this off to the side. If I can see it all at once. Make sure it could fit. And then lastly, we have an answer that all the above and that's the correct answer um what i want to caution about this is if you are creating a quiz where you have all of the above selected the answers automatically do shuffle um, and that's just so that they can't memorize any quiz questions and pass them along to somebody else so if you do want to turn that off so that all the above is always going to be on the bottom you can uncheck the shuffle answers and that would automatically display them in the order you have set up automatically. However, if you still are fine with them shuffling the answers, a little tidbit for that one is instead of all of the above, you can say all answers are correct. And that would also work instead of having to do all the above because if it's all of the above and it fits like at the top, that's not gonna make sense when they select that as their correct answer. Um, so just remember that the answers do shuffle. So if you wanna toggle that on or, on or off, you'll just come back to the top under the general tab here and you can toggle that on or off from there. Once you hit done here, now you'll see you got your nice little quiz set up there for them to take at the end of watching all the slides. It also gives a brief uh, count of how long it will take based off of your narration and how long he is going to take to read that data. And then uh, lastly, I wanted to point out once you add that quiz, you can require a passing score if you need it. So if you wanted to give them a passing score of 80%, just as a note though, if they do not make that 80%, it will make them watch the whole lesson in its entirety over again. It doesn't start them over at the quiz portion. They will, it assumes that, hey, you didn't pay attention enough, so we are gonna require you to watch the entire lesson again. However, if you don't have the passing score checked, what ends up happening is they just take the lesson and, uh, <clears throat> They have to re-ask the questions over and over again until they make 100%. So it's a true 100% that they have to complete all the questions correctly before it'll complete them on that training topic. Um, so that's pretty much in a nutshell how to kind of convert a PowerPoint into rebuilding it back into our lesson builder, which does take a little bit of build out, but once it's set up, it's ready to go and you shouldn't have to touch it any further after that. And then if you do run into any questions, feel free to reach out to our email, which is support at kpaehs.com.